We wish to plead our own cause. Too long have others spoken for us. John B. Russworm and Samuel Corner said these words in 1827 in the first black owned and operated newspaper, Freedom's Journal. I'm Rosemarie Miller and I'm here with Morgan Debon, the CEO and founder of Blavity, to tell us about the state of the black press in 2023. Thank you so much for joining me today, Morgan. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So Morgan, how are you all applying this quote in 2023 at Blavity? You know, it's, a, it's an interesting quote. I think um, it's more relevant now than it, than it ever has been because media and the internet have converged, right? So previously, um, the history of African-American media, we had our own newspapers, we had our own radio stations. And as the digital revolution happened 10 plus years ago, a lot of Amer African-American businesses were disrupted, right? Just like every other media industry. But the challenge was that this new world of venture-backed media came about, and we were a little bit behind on creating digital media companies and owning our own voice on the internet. You know, you have things like Black Twitter, you have things like Vine, and tons of platforms where Black folks were able to share their narratives, their stories, and go directly to one another. But as times changed, it was important that we built our own media company so that we could actually control our own narratives, regardless of whatever platform decides it's trending or not trending that day. So how, how has that change impacted ad revenue lately? Well, that's a good question. I think ad revenue fluctuates, it's seasonal, right? It's a reflection of what's happening in the consumer marketplace. Um, most of digital media's traffic historically came from Facebook. And as Meta, as a platform, uh, particularly Facebook, has gone out of favor with many millennials and Gen Z, that has resulted in less and less people clicking on articles. And Facebook itself has been in quite a battle. You know, we all follow things happening in Congress, et cetera, around fake news. And is if Facebook itself is a publisher, and so they've actually leaned away from promoting in the algorithm content and news, and then more in favor of personal stories and photos and videos and things of that nature. So the result is less traffic, right? Less traffic distribution from Facebook to publishers. And then with the evolution of AI, we're starting to see less traffic from search engines because they're able to just aggregate the information, get it to the customer, and then ultimately they don't have to click through to another website. So media overall is going through a huge transformation and certainly black media with uh, a more limited advertising budget with different cons consumer companies, it can be tight, right? right? Companies like Blavity, we're highly diversified. We have conference businesses, we have talent acquisitions business. So we have multiple businesses underneath the Blavity Incorporation, which has helped us make sure that we're weathering the storm either way. Mm -hmm. So this makes me think about what Black media companies are actually promoting to their audiences? Like, are we actually informing Black people with the right information? I'm kind of thinking about the collapses of uh, multiple banks and how I didn't really see that highlighted in the Black press, but that's a major right. thing. It's such a good point. So one of the things that you're highlighting is actually that the digital media landscape the content that we're all covering has had to shift quite a bit because of keyword blocking from advertisers and advertising agencies. It's a huge problem. It's the number one problem that I talk to my executives about in the media business because of brand safety rules happening. Like I'm sure you've heard the conversation on brand safety with like YouTube or other platforms, but that trickles down to brand safety on the articles that we write. So we'll get a campaign from a big publisher, from a big agency or a big client. And they'll say, well, you can't write about Trump, black, airplanes, bank collapse, and you'll have a, an entire list, sometimes 400 plus words, of all the things that if you write about this, we will not monetize those pages. And so the result is over time, you're really disincentivizing your editorial team from being independent and writing about the things that matter, mm -hmm. environmental sustainability, financial literacy, you know, things that are impacting us in our community, police brutality, you would not believe the keywords that were blocked during George Floyd and the uprising. And so you have to make a decision as a media owner, 
Are you going to do what's right and what's good for the community and what's going to inform the community, but at the risk of not having any cash flow? Or are you going to compromise and split the difference and try to meet the needs of your advertisers and your clients, which may have a negative outcome, you know, ultimately for your community in terms of access to information? So what is Blavity doing in this case? Blavity, we do both. So certain sites are very brand safe. So we have a portfolio of brands that we work with, one in our publisher network, and those span everything from food blogs to pet blogs to entertainment sites like The Shade Room. So we work collaboratively with other publishers and on our own brands, our own and operated brands, some of them are more brand safe than others. So Blavity, I say Blavity.com, you write about what the people need to read. Things like Travel Noir or Lifestyle or Travel site, they do take in consideration keyword blockers. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned George Floyd previously, and I'm wondering, have you seen the media landscape change post George Floyd? You know, I think that I've seen you know, more mainstream um, news publications diversify their reporting teams and their journalism, which in, as a result, results in a better representation of issues across the board in this country. Um, you know, as we enter into an election year, it'll be interesting to see what happens next and does that continue? Because there's a lot of issues that are gonna be on the table as we enter this next election season. Um, you know, police brutality overall is a tricky subject for many publications. And there's also this large um, trend towards anti-wokeness. Mm-hmm. Big brands being targeted for having pride celebrations uh, or having pride like things in like Target, right? And that to the media publications as well. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens next. The good news about a brand or a company like Blavity is our demographic is so specific. We don't really care what everybody else is doing because ultimately it's like our audience is and will forever be a multicultural audience, which always is going to be in the minority from a voice representation perspective. So we know we're going to have haters. We know we're going to have people say, you guys are too woke. Why are you writing about this? You know, that's part of our DNA. That fuels us, actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So part of me actually wonders, Morgan, do you believe the Black press has lost its way? I mean, I, I go to certain websites. And I'm not going to say mm-hmm. on this platform mm-hmm. the stuff I see, <laughs> but you it's know what I'm awesome. saying. You, you know what I'm saying. I do. do you think we've lost our way? Yeah, I'll say it for you. I mean, I definitely think that entertainment and celebrity news and gossip is taking over a lot of platforms. Um, I think that is a reflection of the constraints that are from the systemic racism in ad agencies and in how people treat black owned media companies because we are beholden to what our customers will and will not accept as socially acceptable for their brands to sit next to. So one of the things that I try to talk about and equip my team with is like, we have to push back. Like we have to, when we get those lists of all the words they don't want to see their content next, we have to say, you came to our company for a reason. You came to this company because you want to reach the black audience. You have to trust that we're going to do that in a way that is appropriate. And if we use language that other places may seem a little funky, it is trust. You have to trust us, right? You're not buying spots and dots. This is not a mass market play. You're buying access to real people who are important to this culture and are driving purchases and purchasing decisions. And I think that too often we receive what is given to us and we say, thank you. Instead of saying, this is not enough. It should be more, and it needs to be on our own terms because we actually are a prized community. We drive so much of culture, and we need to be able to do this the right way. I think some brands get it. I'm not saying all brands don't get it, but some brands and most brands, we still have a lot of pushback. We have a lot of pushback. So what do you think is next for the Black press? I see a lot of consolidation. You know, I'm really excited about certain publications and, and companies like BET being available back to get back for black ownership. There's a lot of conversations in smaller rooms around what that will look like and how that will make an impact to the wider network. Um, we're all, we all talk a lot. Every black media CEO is 
on an email thread with each other. So we're very collaborative. Um, I think we are really trying to focus on how can we serve our audience and perhaps detach our dependency on big media dollars to finance our businesses. So for example, Blavity, we have Afrotech. Afrotech is an incredible community of black entrepreneurs, innovators, people in the technology industry and professional folks who are looking to advance in their careers. It is completely separate from the media business. That business is incredibly profitable and building out a way for people to hire and recruit black talent called Talent Infusion throughout the year. Having a diversified business is better for our ability to serve our ultimate customer because we are not going to be beholden on one industry deciding if black is trendy or not, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think more and more media companies in the black media space are thinking about, should we have experiences in music festivals? Should we have membership and commerce experiences? Should we have merch, right? And thinking about how they can diversify outside of just ad dollars. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Morgan.